Let us go further in our videos about scientific work and speak about presentations. So now you have done a lot of your work already. You have uh, uh, done literature research. You have made up your own mind about things. You have done some research of your own. And now you have to present this kind of research. Here again, the important uh, announcement, the important limitation. It concerns style and style is different among different people and among different groups. So I will tell you what my opinion on that is and what uh, is kind of typical in the computer science uh, research area I am working in. Ask your own supervisor for details, please, especially regarding templates, etc. So, um, when we look at presentations, you can um, differentiate uh, different styles of presentation. I would uh, do that now, would differentiate between lecture style slides and presentation slides. Yet, lecture style slides, you have seen a lot of them at university. And they are created this way with this uh, vast amount of text uh, because uh, they are used instead of text. So there is no written text anymore. There's no script anymore which we hand out. We just have the slides. We present the slides during the lecture and we give it to you as later references. So it replaces the written text we used to have before. It should be understandable. It, you should be able to read the slide and understand what is on the slide just by itself. So that is one style of slides. And then there is a rather presentational style of slides. So you're giving a presentation, telling people something, and there is something on the slides which only supports what is on there. This is typically done for single presentations. Uh, it supports what it says, but you cannot understand it just by looking at uh, the slide itself. Often it's only some kind of graphics, only a few words, even an image on there. Uh, it is accompanied by something way more substantial, and that is during the presentation, what is being said by the uh, one giving, by the person giving the presentation. So these two slides exist. So what have you seen here in these videos all the time? You have seen the left one. You have seen the lecture style slides. But I would argue for the other ones anyway. So for a presentation, we do not necessarily need lecture style slides. And I will tell you about the disadvantages of those and the dangers of those for the one presenting and uh, will give you argumentation for other uh, kinds of slides. But first, let's ask ourselves, why do we need slides at all? Do we need slides? Do we need to have a presentation um, uh, in PowerPoint or whatever you use? Uh, isn't it better if we could do without? And to a degree, it is better because when we have slides, there is the tendency to read what is on the slide, to just read out what you can read on the slide. And reading what is on the slides is not a good style. Uh, it is uh, boring for those who are listening to it. And uh, as the in member of the audience, you always think, I could have read that myself. Uh, what is the point of having a presentation then, if you can just read it? Um, so that's one thing. But then there's, there are other aspects of that. Um, which uh, is related to referring to the audience. When you do a presentation, you just tell something, you can way easier adapt to what comes from the audience. They give you feedback. Uh, they uh, uh, look at you in certain ways. You see whether they understand what you say or whether they do not or uh, whether they think it's boring or amusing. You see that and you can adapt to that. And you can adapt to it easier if you are free of any material which guides you very much. This material also guides you very much in terms of what you say when and in which order. So having slides gives you an order of telling things. That's of course something which also supports you, but on the other hand, um, it is 
difficult to diverge from it because the slides kind of always draw you back into the previously uh, created order of things. And that's something you might avoid. So maybe you don't need any slides. But on the other hand, if you have slides, the audience can rely to some, rely, but on, uh, need slides. But on the other hand, if you have slides, the audience can relate to something. They can look at something while you are talking. And even if they get distracted uh, for a moment, they can get back to it. They can get back in. And um, don't tell me it has never occurred to you or never happened to you during um, a lecture that your mind has wandered off. And of course, a slide helps you uh, to get back into the slide to the into the discussion you get you can read what you may have missed and you can uh, gen join uh, the presentation of course the lecturer it's, himself has a memory aid and i use the slide uh, that way i uh, sometimes have a glimpse on the slides which are as you can see down here and uh, then have a memory aid uh, to know what what else i wanted uh, to speak about and of course, the most important thing is there are things which I can show you, what which I can hardly tell you about. So only being able to tell you about something sometimes is not enough. So then you need something to show. So we need a compromise. We don't want us to be limited by our presentation, uh, but we, on the other hand, we don't want to be completely free to the extent that we lose our way. And so we need something in between. And this we can translate in some do's and some don'ts. And this is what I have here. So what should be on the slides? Uh, if you have a hypothesis, you, ha you formulated a hypothesis about uh, something, about uh, something you looked into in your research, or you have a research question, this research question and the hypothesis should appear on slides because it is very central, very important, and it reduces the burden of those watching your presentations to have it all in mind, to keep it in mind, because that's, that's very troublesome. Uh, you have to be remembered of those things. And that's why it makes a lot of sense to repeat those things. It is good style, to repeat important information in slides. You can later extend them uh, or you can just repeat them as they are, but it makes sense to remind people of certain things. If you have good examples for something or you want to show results, show them, show them on a slide. So that is something then that uh, the audience can refer to, can have a look on and uh, well process for themselves in their speed they want while you are talking about it. If you have definitions, if you need have the need to define things, make those definitions permanent, persistent on a slide and again repeat those things. So if you have a certain definition and the definition is important throughout your presentation, you can repeat the same definition. It can occur more than once. So you can repeat things in presentations, uh, but of course you cannot put everything into a presentation. So a presentation always means making a selection. You don't have enough time to present everything. And not everything is of equal importance. So select the important things and even show them more than once if necessary and leave out minute details. Uh, tell people that you can speak with them about those later if they are interested. But limit yourself for the slides. Only few things on there which happen more often, which you put onto them more often than once. So this would be an argumentation for presentation style slides. But maybe you don't want that. Maybe you want to create a presentation style which, which contains the presentation itself. What do you do then? Then it's way more difficult. Uh, then it is difficult for the presenter not to fall into the trap 
to read what is on the slide. Can easily happen. Now, I'm standing in front of this slide here, which has all the argumentation I wanted to provide to you. And it's now, of course, easy for me to just read what it says here and say, if you are tempted to read slides, do not use them at all. For example, by including a blank slide. Well, that's boring and, and typically people cannot read well. Um, it is difficult enough to present well, to speak well in an interesting manner, but reading things aloud in a good way is way more difficult. So please never read the slide. There is a certain trick you could use. You can have a, the slide you show, which has only limited information, but then you have another slide which you then skip, you just go over it, and which has all the argumentation. So if you provide the slideshow later as a PDF file, for example, people have both. They have the presentation which you gave and they have the slide with the whole argumentation on it. If you don't want that, try not to read it out. Speak about what is on the slide without reading the slides. That's a very important thing. Nevertheless, even if you do that, even if you have everything on the slide, all the presentation, all the argumentation is on the slide, it might, it's still important that those important parts, like the examples, the definitions, the research questions, the hypotheses, the results, those need to be front and center. One has to be able to see those among all the other stuff. There are other things you should not do and you should not read the slides. I've already told you that I won't go into that again, but you should also not animate your slides, at least not in a senseless way. Of course, you can use animation uh, if you want to build something. You can say, uh -huh, I have a complex concept uh, and it consists of several parts and I show them one after the other and I speak about them one after the other. Or you could also use them on different slides. So in, in the beginning you had a slide with only part of the concept and later you have it extended. Um, uh, you can do animations in that area. But you should never just animate things uh, because you can animate them. And you should not animate things in the style of uh, letting bullet points appear one after the other. You see here that I never do that, uh, or uh, very rarely do that. Uh, there are some uh, areas where I do it because I don't want to uh, spoil things. I want to speak about things a little later. Uh, but typically I do not do that. And if I did, the uh, probability of me reading out what is there would be incredibly high and the guiding factor of I have to speak about that first and that later is incredibly high because I only see parts of all of it all the time. I never see the whole thing. Now I can look at this and it, I could speak about the second bullet point before the first one because it uh, is what suits me better in the situation uh, but I could never do that if I had to uh, um, animate one after the other and they would appear one after the other. So uh, don't do that, especially not to distract people, because if you do that, the, the slide is always changing, it's very distracting. Uh, provide a static image, a static slide. People can now read what I want to speak about in a few moments. So what? Let them. Uh, they're grown-up people, they can do whatever they want especially here in the video, they could just skip there anyway. So why not just provide them with everything you want to speak about? And if you are a good speaker, they will anyway rather listen to you than read what is on the slide and only refer to the slide when necessary. What you should also avoid is slides which have no content. And there are certain slides which have no content. Well, first of all, the first slide you uh, almost always have is a title slide and of course the title slide has content. It provides the title and it provides who you are typically, often in what context you are giving the presentation. This slide is really important and you can use the slide uh, to present yourself and to provide the motivation for what you are about to, to say later. After that, you often see uh, slides which contain uh, a table of contents uh, or an agenda. 
that is a slide I would suggest you just leave out because there are two things that can happen. Either the agenda is very generic, which means you say you start with the beginning, then you have uh, an argumentation in the middle, and at the end you have an, uh, uh, an end and an outlook. That doesn't help you. Uh, or it is uh, too concrete, too detailed, uh, without uh, any context yet, so people won't understand it. So there is no need to show such a slide. You could include such things into uh, the uh, layout of the slides itself. So you could show the agenda. That helps people to see where you are. But there's no need to speak about such things. Uh, no need to lose valuable time on speaking about an agenda. What you should leave out too is this famous last slide, which only says questions question mark or thank you exclamation mark or something like that uh, of course you need a last slide because one of the slides always is the last one but instead of this slide which has no content of its own provide the audience with a slide which shows the most important or most interesting aspects so show them the question again show them the hypothesis again show results show an example make a collage of things uh, that helps people to refer to something people can refer to a certain uh, aspect of things and can then ask questions about them uh, that's way better than a senseless question question mark um, slide. That's not necessary whatsoever. There are certain things you should keep in mind, uh, which are often forgotten. The second one I've already told you about several times now, that you should uh, um, repeat central concepts, definitions and thesis. So I'll don't tell you those things again. But what I haven't told you yet is uh, that uh, the motivation is very important. Uh, it is really important for a presentation, uh, for the audience of a presentation rather, to understand what the presentation is about. So why is someone giving the presentation? What is the topic? And uh, how do you want to tackle that? And that's what we would call the motivation uh, of something. And that has to be an integral part of a presentation. It is more important than the results itself, I would say. So. If people don't understand what you are talking about and why you are talking about it, they will not follow you. So please provide motivation. Explain what you are about to do. And the best place where you can do that, if you don't want to have slides for it, you can of course have a motivation slide. If you don't want to have that, use the initial, the, uh, the title slide and speak about those things on the title slide because the title of everything is on there already. So it would be the perfect opportunity to tell people why that is a presentation, why you're presenting those things at all. And another thing you should keep in mind is giving, providing summaries. Uh, it is, a, it is a, a stream. You are having things in a stream and it is extremely difficult to remember all those things. That's why it is interesting or necessary or, or called uh, to repeat things. And you can use that to give summaries, to provide summaries, which help people to follow you. It's not that important in a 20-minute presentation, but if you have a longer presentation, more lengthy presentation, if you want to give a lecture, uh, it is really important that you, re that you uh, have summaries, that you have comprehensive summaries at certain points uh, within the presentation. Which parts should a presentation have? And I now give you a preview on what I will uh, show you when writing about scientific text. And uh, let's leave this alone. Let's look at this adaption. This is what I will tell you should be the content of the thesis, of the report, of the written text, of the homework, however you want to call that. And that is also a good structure for the presentation of your work. So you start with an introduction, that's of course not telling much, which has the motivation in it. Then you tell us what the problem is and what the background uh, of that is. Then you tell us what you, how you want to approach that and how you approached it and give us the argumentation you have. Then maybe you have an evaluation, maybe you come up with a result. 
they can at the end tell us something about what's the limits, what the limitation of your work are, what you left out, which you which parts you did not look into. And that would be kind of future work uh, that you suggest someone else can do that. And in the end, you give a conclusion. So this is the outline of a typical thesis. And it could also be the outline of a presentation. So the, the order of telling things is quite similar in the presentation as it is in your written text. Or at least it can be. Uh, it does not have to be. You can do, use different orders. Uh, but it's uh, quite likely that you have the, uh, uh, the, the, the tendency to do that. What you should not do is put every detail in it. But the, the outline itself, the structure itself, can be quite similar. So, as I said, you cannot put everything in it because you have limited time. Time management is a problem. How can you handle that? What can you do? Uh, you can, of course, try to uh, uh, rehearse your presentation up to the point that you end really on time. I consider that not to be very productive. And uh, for me, it never worked. <laughs> because when I try that, uh, when I'm doing the presentation, I rather uh, either am a little nervous and speak way faster than I thought I would and I'm finished earlier. Or uh, when in the presentation, I see the, what people do and give more examples or uh, explain it again, uh, things like that. Um, so I'm slower. So that's not really possible. You should, of course, uh, rehearse your presentation uh, to some degree. Um, but then, uh, in the end, it will always be a little different than what you have rehearsed. So time will either run short or you will have plenty of time. So what would you do? Uh, if time runs short and you should have some kind of uh, watch or some type of clock, uh, around you that you see that time runs short. In a presentation, often you are indicated uh, that time runs short. And uh, there is someone uh, in, in a session chair uh, holding up pa pieces of paper which tell you that you have five more minutes, something like that. Uh, don't, tr if that happens, if you are in a hurry, don't try to hurry. Don't try to tell us everything there is which you still have on your slides, just in a faster way. That would never work. You have to prioritize what you tell us. Tell us uh, what is important. Tell us what you would have liked to tell us about. But unfortunately, due to uh, the passage of time, you have not the opportunity to do that. But then tell us that you would like to speak with us about that later on during the question and answer session. So that way the audience knows what is there to expect and uh, uh, without you hurrying through it. Because if you hurry through it, they won't understand anything anymore. Tell them the most important things and tell them what they have missed because of the passage of time. On the other hand, when you have time to spare, of course you can then start speaking slowly, but you should not exaggerate that. Uh, it always makes sense to have additional material. So you have a slide which is your end slide, the one with the collage on it, uh, which I spoke about uh, before. This is your end slide. But provide a number of further slides after that. And uh, on those slides you put another example. You put uh, some detail you might include, but uh, maybe you don't if you don't have the time. Uh, and those you have available. For this, it makes sense because you don't want to show that. You want to want the audience to have the appearance of a linear presentation. But you have to jump somewhere. And there is a trick, uh, a feature, which every almost every uh, presentation software has, which uh, many people do not know. And this is uh, the, the possibility to jump to uh, certain uh, slides just by entering the number. Um, this is a slide 28 and I want to go back here. Let's see what is on slide 9. I only enter 9, enter, and now I'm on slide 9. Ah, it was the one about literature survey. What was it? 28, 2, 8, enter. Aha, time management, here I was. So if you have a, sh a small sheet 
uh, which tells you where you find what, you could uh, then have a, um, a brief look onto that sheet, jump into another example, tell the example, jump back where you were, and nobody will really notice. You have just included something uh, for uh, which, which fits in there perfectly, because you've thought about that before, uh, without, uh, you having, uh, without you having to go through it this way, uh, um, because that's always annoying for everyone um, uh, who sees that. So that is a good way of managing time. Be a little more flexible. Uh, have additional material available. Uh, and uh, in case you run out of time, uh, do this speaking about it stuff. So you tell people what you would have told without actually telling it and uh, make it available for them at a later time. So I have three more things I'm often asked about um, in terms of uh, presentations, so I cover them here. One is templates. Uh, I'm often asked whether I provide templates, and I personally do not. I don't provide templates for presentations. I know that there are many templates out there. There are you know, templates by the university or by uh, some professors who have their own templates and hand them out to students. If you want to use them, please use them. Uh, uh, anyway, I think templates are not terribly important for presentations. If you are um, an executive of the university or of a research institute or, or of a company and do a presentation for the company, research institutes uh, or university, of course it makes sense that you follow their guidelines on presentations and use their presentation templates. But uh, as a student, you're giving your presentation uh, I don't see why that should, would be necessary. So you can use any presentation style which is sensible, nothing too colorful, nothing too fancy, just standard presentation style. I would be very happy um, uh, about that. What it should have is slide numbers, like uh, here the 29, which helps people to uh, refer to something. So in the discussion later on, you could now ask me, uh, have a look at slide 29, uh, or would you bring up twi uh, slide 29 again? You can then do this 229 enter thing. And uh, you are there on 29 and we can speak about those things. What's also important is the title of the presentation and your name. Uh, especially important when there are conferences where there are several presentations, one after the other, and uh, you can easily uh, lose track. And you, it really helps if you see who's speaking and what the topic is. If you put that somewhere on the slide, I would appreciate that very much. Otherwise, you can use any um, style, any template you want to. What is very important when giving presentations uh, is, of course, the style and not being too boring while not being ridiculous. And that is something uh, that you can only learn by doing. Uh, it's not possible to just tell you that and then suddenly you are there. Some, some people are naturals, they do it easily. And sometimes uh, there are people who are very much struggling with that. And you know that from your own experience. There are professors who have been professors for 30 years and you think their presentation style is not the best. While uh, you might have a, a colleague uh, among uh, your fellow students who does a presentation and does it as if he had done it for 40 years, even though he's only 19 years old. Uh, both things exist. Uh, so uh, that's, of course, clear. But, of course, doing it more often helps you doing it better. Try to be not too theoretic. Try to work with examples. If you only tell us the theory and only be on the meta level, it's difficult to follow you. It depends, of course, a little on the subject. If possible, try to be entertaining, but uh, that's dangerous. Don't try to be ridiculous. Uh, don't try to be uh, um, funny in a funny way, in an uh, exaggerated uh, way. Don't be too, be too uh, colloquial either. Don't speak in a, uh, uh, in a too scientific way, which nobody understands. 
but uh, don't try to be uh, colloquial. Like uh, another year when someone was giving a presentation about, well, I don't know what it, what it was, it doesn't matter, um, but he wanted to point out that it's easy to understand. And he told us um, that uh, every, every moron can understand it or every idiot can understand it. That's not proper style, you shouldn't do that. Um, we, when it happens to you, we will tell you. Uh, it's a matter of getting used to those things. And then there is feedback, and feedback is something which can be challenging. Um, you remember it from uh, childhood times, when parents give you feedback on something, you might be have a tendency to be of a different opinion, or at least uh, it was so when I was young. Uh, because, of course, you get confronted with something and you get into a defense mode. Don't do that. Don't defend yourself. Not that way. Try to accept the criticism as something which is constructive. Take it down. Take notes. Write it down. And uh, don't, don't go into the defense mode. And uh, then later on, if you don't understand, someone has criticized you and you think that wasn't fair, I don't, I don't, don't get it. Uh, don't try to uh, spark uh, an argument right there. Do it later. Uh, after uh, the presentation, after the session, you can speak with someone. What did you mean? Well, I, I tried, I, I thought I had done this and this, but you said this and that. What's the problem here? And then uh, one can figure those things out. Of course, if you are in the audience, you have to provide constructive um, feedback too. If you just say that's silly and, or uh, you are an idiot, uh, that's of course not helpful either. So never do that. And the last thing is something that often comes up too, and it's the question about uh, whether we need to have literature references in presentations. We will speak about literature references in the next video about uh, uh, the report on the thesis uh, in depth. Uh, but uh, here, uh, very shortly, what about uh, presentations? Well, uh, of course, it's also scientific work and uh, you need to uh, refer to things, but typically you do that when speaking about it. And you don't have to mention all the references all the time. That's very annoying. You could uh, put references on the slides, like in small print somewhere in the corner. You say well, you you indicate what you indicate where you have it from. That's better than having a final slide with all the references because nobody reads those. Of course, if you hand out your presentation uh, or provide it as a PDF, that helps. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, it's uh, still not the best way of doing things. I would do it the following way. I would put small references uh, on the slides itself and only mention a reference if it is very central for what you want to say. So if you're having a topic and uh, in that topic uh, there is a famous example or famous case that is has been provided by Miller in 1993. So then you can say, um, as Miller in 1993 found out, but then you tell it. Uh, in our, all other cases, I think you'd never have to mention uh, the references. You, can, you should have them somewhere, but don't mention them. That is very much different in the written text, which I will speak about in the next video.